Welcome back to Scarbodge Not Built. So in this episode, we're going to be making some wheels for the E46 M3. So I've previously made some other wheels you may have seen in the other videos. There's some Speedline 434s. There's my version of the Maxi wheels, which are also found on the Corolla. They may look very similar to the originals with a few differences. These have got a higher offset, so therefore the arch is nicer. And also, there's clearance for my brake caliper kits. One of the other sets of wheels is my Team Dynamic Pro Race 1.2s. So I'm going to show you how I design my wheels and how I print them. So we're going to hop into Fusion 360 and let's get started. Right, so the first step in getting these wheels made, we're going to design the barrel. So we're going to click up in the corner, have a view from the right. I'm going to create a sketch on this plane. We're going to click construction line. The wheels are 52mm in diameter, so we're going to do a 26mm line in there. Now we're going to start making the profile for the barrel. So we'll start off up here, take construction off. We're going to go down 4mm. We're going to go across 26. Up 4mm. Across 2mm. Down 2mm. Across 4.25. Up 1.5, across 1.25, down 1.5, we'll finish that one there, do the same on this side, so across 2mm, down 2mm, Cross port four point two five up one point five cross one point two five down one point five join those together. Now you'll see we've got this shaded in, which means it's basically there's no gaps. So we can extrude that. So we're going to click the solid tab, we're going to use revolve, click that profile, then for the axis, we're going to click that centre axis there, 360 degrees, new body, press OK, and now you can see we've got the basic design for the barrel. Now that we've got the barrel, for the next step we're going to do the dry flange. So we're going to be on the front view, create a sketch on this plane here, centre point circle, and we're going to go for a 4.4mm hole, gives us a bit of clearance to get the thread through from the drive shaft. Next one, a 10.5mm, that will give us enough room to get the wrench in. Another centre point circle. We're going to go 17mm on this, just so we've got a bit of body on it. Now for the hex itself. So we're going to go for polygon, and we're going to come for circumscribed polygon. Click the centre, now we're going to go 12.4, as they're usually at 12mm hex. This will give us a bit of clearance for any variation in the printer. So we're going to go 6.2 on that. Now 
and that's our sketch done for that. So now we need to turn it into a solid. So the first thing we're going to do is select the extrude command and these three profiles. Rotate it round and we're going to go minus 9.25, click OK. Now to create the hex, the sketches have disappeared, so bring the sketch back. Extrude again. We're going to click this profile and this profile. Then for the start, we're going to click object. I'm going to pick this face here. Let's hide the barrel, make it a bit easier to see. So you can see as we move this through, it's going to cut. And we're going to go for a 4.25 mil. Press OK. And you can see that's not cut the hex out for it. Now for the front, we're going to extrude. Can pick that profile there. I'm going to take it back three mil. And there you can see we've got our drive flange that will allow us to bolt the wheel onto the hub. So the next thing we need to do is join these two together with a face. Next, we need to create the face for the wheel. So, the first thing we're going to do is insert canvas. On this face. Scale it up until it's about right. And we can rotate it around as well. So, minus 1.5. That looks close enough. Press OK. So we create another sketch on this front face. First of all, we're going to have a construction line from the centre point. Oh, press OK. Then what we're going to do is a centre point circle. We're going to try and get this edge here. That looks about right. Then we do another centre point circle. Somewhere around here. So if we press M, click this, we can actually move it in and out. Next, we're going to go for a fit point spline. Get it off the side there. And we can roughly try and get a similar shape to this. Here. Finish that. Now what we can do with these press M to move. Click this. We can actually alter the shape. And press OK. And what we're going to want to do is have this line tangent with that. So that means we've got a nice smooth curve of this line following this. Then next we're going to click mirror for the objects. We want to mirror this line across that. 
Press on okay. And that's close enough to that, you can see we're slightly off. We could try rotating the canvas a bit more. See, due to the angle the photo was taken at, now the top's not matching up when we've got the bottom matched up. So you kind of have to find a happy medium unless you've got the perfect photo. We'll go somewhere about there. Press OK. Now we're going to want to try and get this line done. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can edit the sketch. Do a construction line. Uh, somewhere through the middle of it. Press OK. We can literally pick our lines. Go off to the edge. Now you see we left the construction line on. What we can do is select the two lines, hold control down if you're on Windows, turn construction off, and that now gives us a sealed profile there. That's its own profile, that's its own profile along with this. So the other thing we can do is put a fillet on this edge. Turn construction off. Just gives us a nice curve on that. Once that's done. We've got a couple of ways of finishing this face off. So we can create a circular pattern and in the objects We can select our lines, center point. We want to go full 360 on it. And then we can just adjust how many we want. So we can go 8 on that. Press OK. Now if we hide our canvas, we've got the basic pattern of our wheel. So we'll finish that one for now. Now let's go on to actually making the face. Right, so now we've got our face designed. Now we need to start doing the actual profile of the face. So we're going to hide our sketch. 
and if we use a measure tool if we measure from the back of the dry flange to the back of the barrel we've got a 21mm distance standard offset seems to be around 19mm so we're going to click move make sure we're on bodies click anywhere on that body move it back 2mm now if we measure again back of the dry flange to the barrel 19mm so we can now start doing the profile of the face so the first thing we're going to need to do is split the body we're going to split these two splitting tool it's going to be this plane there press ok and you can see that's now in two pieces it's not a problem because we can stick it back together in a minute so we're going to start a new sketch on this plane P for project or you can also find it in here and we want to click these two press OK now if we hide our bodies we've got basically an outline of the cross section so if we go for a thick point spine we'll go from here put a bit of a bend in there another one there and then we'll just join it to there and press OK now that allows us to move these around now to change the shape of it you've also got these handles here which you can adjust the curvature on it so ok that was a bit extreme but we can go for that, so if we use a reference photo you can see the wheel sort of dips down goes back up a bit and then goes down and then for the higher offsets it seems to be a bit smoother so here you can see it comes up and goes down a bit and back up another fit point spline so let's go from here this one's not so critical because it's the back of the wheel press ok finish the sketch and now you can see we've now got another seal profile which we can then revolve so if we bring our bodies back click revolve on that for the axis same as when we did the barrel we'll click there now if we bring all these back they can all be joined together but we're not going to do that just yet so if we remove barrel there's our profile of the face press ok we've now got three three pieces so we've got the face two halves of the barrel so let's combine those back together join there we go. So 
for the reason I haven't joined those together. I'll show you why in a minute. If we now bring our sketch back. Tide barrel. We've got a couple of ways of doing this. So we can extrude and we can click each of these individually all the way around. Drag it backwards and it will cut them out. We can press OK and we're left with the face of the wheel. If we bring our barrel back, you can see we've then got the full wheel which we can join together. But the reason I've left it like that is because another trick we can do if we wanted a higher offset is we can actually click this body we can actually move it back so if we press OK on that we've now got a bit of dish on, dish on the wheel and a 3mm higher offset so if we now measure it back of the flange to the barrel we got 16mm, so that's a 3mm offset. The final piece is just to tidy it up really. So we can fill it this edge. Put two mil, two mil fill it on the barrel if we wanted. Let's press OK. If we combine these. can then add a bit of a fillet to all these edges. Uh, E46 CSL cell type boil with a 3 mil offset and the other thing you can do because fusion's parametric if I edit the sketch of the profile uh, let's say I alter this so give it a move Just an example, one more on that. If 
finish the sketch. That's actually altered the profile of the wheel without having to do it all again bit by bit. So, one of the other things you can do now if you wanted a higher offset, if we move, and this time we want to move faces. So we're going to want to move this face, this face and this face. Currently we're at a 3mm offset. We move it back, 3mm, press OK. You can see the hub is now sticking out further. The recess in here is deeper. show you that in cross section you can see how this moves which is also going to also your offset There are the basics of creating your own wheel. So one of the other options you've got for cutting out all these faces, if we scroll back in the timeline, before we did it, bring the sketch back, and if we extrude this one, this one, this one, have it as a cut, cut through, press OK, we can then create a circular pattern, but we can actually select features so if you only had this one drawn out, this one drawn out for the object you would select the cut that we did down here for the axis you'd select your centre point and then same again, we'll crank this up to 8 and if we press OK you can see it's now cut all those out. Ignore this, it's cut the barrel. We can fix that actually. Edit this feature. If we go objects to cut. We don't want to cut the barrel. Which you'll be able to see if I turn that on, it's now cutting the barrel. No, it's not. Press OK. Scrolling past you, circular pattern. You can see it's now cut the face out and left the barrel intact. Yeah, let's remove that. We'll go back to where we were.
and there's our wheel. I'm going to edit these because I need a 6mm and 9mm offset and then next time you'll see this is when I'm loading my modified files up into Lychee ready for the resin printer. Alright so I've modified these now so you can see there's slightly more dish on this wheel as opposed to this and if you look from the back this has got a higher offset than this so this will effectively stick out more that will be going on the rear that will be going on the front so that's a 9mm offset and this is a 6mm offset so now I'll show you how to save them get them into Lightyear or if you're going to use any other slicer for it whether it be Cure or if you want to print them on FDM So you right click, save as mesh, high refinement, I use 3MF as a format. Type in what you want to save it as, press save again. Do the same for the other, save as mesh. I'm not sure why it keeps closing over to OBS, but right, let's get these into Lightyear. Right, so now we're in Lightyear, we're going to add the wheels. So we're going to lift it up. Around four to five now. Now we're going to start adding some supports. So if we go on the prepare tab, if we go for manual supports, we can actually use a mirror. So you'll see that rather than me putting in all these all the way around, I've only got to do half of it. You can use auto supports. But I found to try and get a sort of clean crisp edge. You may not need this many supports, but I found as it's the back of the wheel, you're not going to see any marks that are left if there are any. Also helps stop the print from failing. We can just add a few more in here just to give it a bit more strength. So that should reduce the failure rate. Any areas that are checkered are what it classes as sort of unsupported. Depending on the angle. And there's one well. Like I say that might be a lot of supports on there, but I'd rather have more supports than the failed print. And the next thing we've got is as it prints there's potential for it to fail on this rib and on there as well so there are different supports we can put in there if you're at the right distance it should change automatically I've had no issues so far using these kind. Right, that should be both wheels fully supported. Ready to slice and send to the printer. So, export. Export slices to file. I'm also going to try and print one off on the Ender 3 filament printer. Just going to load them up. Um, 
I'll go with the six mil. supports and with tree supports. So for one wheel, six hours and two minutes on the highest quality. Compare that to two and a half hours for the two wheels with even better quality on the resin printer. Let's try with tree supports. Five hours and 58 minutes, so not much difference. Try a bit more until. Same amount of material, just an extra four minutes. Let's go with that. Right, this is how the one wheel has come off on the FDM printer and this is one that took around six hours. You can see the layer lines on it. But let's see if we can get the supports off. see the supports have come off on the outside. A little bit of clean up to be done. Now let's get the supports off the inside. Now we've got the finished wheel off the FDM. Let's take a look at the resin one next. Right, so the resin prints are now finished. They're still on the bed, they've been left to drain for a little bit. As you can see, we've got a deeper dish, slightly deeper dish here. And this will be the six mil offset, nine mil offset. There's different ways of cleaning these. I usually just put the whole bed into the IPA just there and let it wash it off or you can remove it from the bed put them in the basket wash it up so we're going to get it in the washer okay so we've got our wash and cure station This is a bed you put your parts on when you want to cure them. We're going to go for five minutes of washing. And we'll come back when that's finished. Now that's finished. Drain as much IPA as we can back into the tank. to remove these off the bed and off the supports. The wheel's actually pulled off the supports nice and easy. Now you might be able to see little lines along here these were the supports we put in just to make sure we got a crisp edge on these lines here on these ropes so we just need to scrape those off and so they're all scraped I like to get some 99% IPA Them in the lid. Take a toothbrush. There we have. 
have the ribs removed. And that was one wheel. Clean, supports removed. Now we've just got to do the same on the other. That's both wheels now cleaned, all the supports removed, ready to air dry before we cure them. Now we're just going to remove the supports off the build plate. Nice and easy. And the build plate is ready to be popped back in for the next lot. Now that they're dried, we're going to cure them. If we look there you can see some minor layer lines, you could sand them out or when you're printing, you print them at a 45 degree angle which can help hide some lines but it can also make others more visible all depending on the design of the wheel. Right, I'm going to give these a quick scuff up and get them ready for paint. Just going to give the surface of the wheels a quick key with some of this. Got some keyed up. I'm going to give them a coat of this and then let's get them on the car. So here we have the wheels with the coat of silver on them. You can still see some very small layer lines, you could sand them out. But for the purpose of this video, we're not gonna. Now I did print a second set. This one came out perfectly fine. This one actually failed. So my supports come off the back that easily. That this was stuck to the FEP sheet on the bottom of the printer and it just continued to print these last few layers with it sat on the bed and we've also got the same wheel printed on the FDM printer right so let's get some tires on them and get them on the car There you go, you can see the tyres fit just as well as they do on the original wheels. And there we have the wheels fitted. I think they look quite nice and they've come out quite well. I've done these more of a scale detail than anything else. But these ones are not going to go to waste. I think it'd be interesting because how thin these spokes are here, I wonder how strong they're going to be. Is the resin going to be stronger than the filament? Maybe we should put them to the test. If that's something you want to see, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.